Hi, everyone. Welcome. My name is Macy, and I have a special host today, Kim Cleary. She is actually an OT, occupational therapist, but she has a very unique perspective as an OT. So, Kim, do you want to share with us uh, your uh, work as an OT? Um, go ahead, Kim. Yes. Um, so I am an occupational therapist. I also have autism and sensory processing disorder. So what made you decide to become an OT? How did you start? So I originally wanted to be a special ed teacher, but my mom, uh, she told me that special ed teachers have way too much paperwork. Um, but little did she know that OTs have a lot of paperwork too. Um, but she, she encouraged me to go into OT because of the variety um, of clients and settings that we can work in and with. And um, once I started school, I really, really enjoyed it and just kept with it. Um, I, I wanted to go into something that would help other people because of my challenges growing up and I had a lot of learning issues. And my autism actually wasn't diagnosed until, um, until my early 20s. But in college, my professors are the ones who identified it. Um, and they, they brought it to my attention. Um, as a child, I was diagnosed with ADHD. Um, but I think that uh, being an OT and, and the as an OT, you learn how to break down everything, every task, every um, action, every behavior. And I started doing that with myself. And that's really what helped me to figure, figure out my sensory system and figure out my difficulties with communicating and um, other stuff. Thank you. So as an autistic OT, you, uh, I think your strength is in your ability to break things down through your personal experiences. And when you work with a client, uh, not just autism specific, how are you able to break things down? Can you tell me some strategies for clients that would help them to break things down? Well, for example, um, I used to work in a nursing home and I worked with the elderly, which I really enjoyed because they go at a slower pace and I needed that. And because of my difficulties with communication, um, I, I, I was able to interact with them better and I could understand them better. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to give an example from the nursing home. Uh, so if I'm, if I'm teaching somebody how to put on their pants, for example, because they had a hip uh, fracture and they can't, um, they're not supposed to um, bend. Then I teach them like one step at a time and I, I break it down. So I might work on just putting the, having the person put their foot in the pant hole. Mm -hmm. We might do that 15 times in one session mm -hmm. and then that for the day and the next day we go on to the next step and so you have to really it's um yeah so you would you say then you sit with them and do it side by side 15 times is that how you do it or you model for them it really depends on the person um i'm really good at um being able to connect with with the the patients and um, I mean some patients they might need a hand over hand so they might need me to actually physically help them um, figure out the steps some patients um, I might need to do like a visual type um, strategy with them and have pictures or another one I might um, be able to just um, walk them through it verbally um, so um, I um, interact uh, many, many times with uh, other autistic adults who are trying to figure out uh, what can I do for work as a career that I would enjoy and be successful in. So I'm going to ask you questions about 
around to help other autistics if they cons they're considering um, doing what you do then um, how can they learn more I would suggest to find different people to shadow different occupational therapists in various settings and and call them up and see if you can um, shadow them and follow them around for a few days and look at all the different settings. Um, the, the trick is you might not like one certain setting, but there's another one that you love. So you really have to make sure that you look at more than one thing, um, more than one aspect. Well, that's a good advice. Um, very, very good advice actually to shadow other OTs, uh, and I think it would be easy for uh, autistic adults, neurodiverse adults, to find an OT, a local OT group, and ask. Uh, so that's a very, very good advice. Um, is there any other tips for beginners? Um, it's um, you have to have your masters. So there's different programs. Like my program, it was five years for my bachelor mm -hmm. and masters. Mm -hmm. It was combined. Um, some programs. They have it um, four years for your undergrad and then two additional years for your master's. Um, it just depends on the, on the program. Um, as far as tips go, I would really um, suggest to, to, before you start any type of job, um, really get to understand yourself and your needs, especially your sensory needs and, um, understand what it is that you need during the day in order to stay regulated. Um, I, I had a really, really hard time in the nursing home because of, it was very loud with all the beeps and buzzers and, um, and people yelling. And that was really hard for me. I loved the work. I love working with my patients. Um, but uh, the setting was really, really difficult um, at, at the time that I was working there because I hadn't yet learned my, my sensory system and, and hadn't learned um, how autism really affects me. Yeah. Uh, one last call, uh, last question about uh, working as an OT. Um, is it possible for an OT to do a home visit? Is it an option for an OT to just work with a family for you to work with parents to do to implement a sensory diet so that way you control your own schedule and just work uh, with as many clients as you can handle is it possible or do you have to work with a clinic uh, you do not have to work with a clinic you can um, do private practice um, you can also do I do consulting right now and I don't I don't work um, in a clinic um, and with consulting, I, um, I talk to a lot of, um, I, I talk to a lot of other professionals and help them better understand autism. And they, they talk to me about their clients and I help them problem solve how to help them, mm -hmm. um, because they don't have that inside of view that I have. Yeah. Um, and for me, that works really well because like you said, like I can control, um, how, how many people I see or um, talk to, um, and and I can control my environment. And um, so, yeah, there's there's That's a good. lot of flexibility. That's great. That's flexibility is key. Yeah. And I don't know if you're taking more clients or um, or thinking of doing more remote supervision. And I'm sure there are a lot of people after they hear their interview, they would like to engage with you professionally. Oh, um, if, yeah, yeah. So if, if people want to work with you, can you tell me how they may be able to find you? Yeah, um, my website is um, kimclary.com. Wonderful. Thank you so much.